Guess, guess who the highest paid actor in Hollywood is? The Rock, right. He's never taken an acting class. Do I sound bitter? Because I am. Yeah. I'm performing in a mall next to a Dave and Buster's, right? So I'm a little bitter. Yeah. That's Jeremy Piven uh, doing a stand up comedy. Uh, we're back with actor Jeremy Piven, who is one of the stars of Sweetwater coming out on April 14th. Um, stand up comedy, obviously, a different muscle mm -hmm. than acting. I know you did Second City and, and, and improv. Uh, I imagine it's more you, and, and you have to talk about your life. And so, is there some element of truth? Is there some bitterness in, in Jeremy Piven? What are you talking about, Frank? <laughs> What does that mean? I no. don't know. <laughs> um, uh, you, wow, that's a great question. You're, you, you're going for the jugular, and I, I appreciate that, sir. Yeah. Um, I, I think, look, since I was eight years old, I've been on stage. I, I started Second City a million years ago. We were talking about earlier with Chris Farley. That's how old I am. And um, I've been trying to improvise and, and rewrite scripts my whole life, and sometimes they let you, sometimes they don't. So... All roads in an interesting way lead to stand up, and yet it is so difficult. And even though, you know, four decades of, of being on stage without rust, and I'm, I'll never forget, I got up down the street at the Laugh Factory, and it was terrifying because the stage is, is small and everyone's kind of on top of you, and you're speaking your truth. And you're not, you're not, you know, you playing. You can't hide. You can't hide. It's your truth. And, it, and and in the beginning, it was terrifying. And then I learned very early on that like, I needed to do five to eight shows a week, about two hundred to two hundred fifty shows a year, to get my bearings. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know. So it's true when 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 comics say you know there are levels to this game, and you you know, and I was the new guy, and here I am, you know, six seven years into the game, and I'm, to a lot of people, still the new guy. So. Am I bitter? Look, the reality is, and, and I don't mean to get too kumbaya on you, there's no time for bitterness. I think, you know, I think it's funny to watch a guy who is wildly bitter, but, but I think, you know, it, 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 and this is going to sound like you and I are on a men's retreat right now doing yoga <laughs> and it's dawn, but I think it is all about gratitude. Yeah. And you can think you need to be in a certain place or you deserve to be, but we're, we're exactly where we're supposed to be. And so, you know, that's not funny, Frank. If I, you know what I mean? If I'm on stage and I'm talking about how I'm working on my highest vibration, no, uh, you, you know, you kind of, you, you know, you, you unpack a lot of things that maybe even, you know, your, your, uh, your flaws, you explore and heighten them. Yeah. And then you know in real time, is it hitting or is it not hitting? Mm. And it's, I've, had, I've been having a blast. Yeah. Let's talk about why you ended up doing stand-up. You took a, a break from doing film and TV for yes. two years, three years? Many years. Yeah. Um, and that came about in the wake of allegations against you of, of, uh, from women of sexual misconduct. Mm. You've said that you have been collateral damage from the Me Too movement. Do you still stand by that statement? Well, listen, it's, it's the type of thing where, to be honest with you, you're living your life, and I, I was all in in my career, and I didn't have a lot of balance in my life. And then when suddenly that's kind of taken away, it, it, it's very easy for one to be bitter, like we were just saying, yeah. and there's no time for that. And you astutely said that when you're on stage doing stand-up, you're in your truth. And because I'm in my truth and I have nothing to hide, you and I spent 12 hours a day together, and yeah. you get a sense of who someone is. Yeah. And so you can't look for justice, you know what I mean, and, and spend your life pining away at that type of stuff. You have to just go, okay, this is what's kind of been handed to me. How do I pivot and make the most of whatever has been handed you? Mm. So, you know, like the great Martin Luther King said, no lie can last forever. And I know that, and I think you know, um, w you know. I know that you know. Probably your your producers or someone is looking for a soundbite, but it's not about that. It's about taking ownership of your life. And when you when you know your truth, um, you can get up on a stage anywhere 
and when you have nothing to hide. And also, what a, what a gift this has given me. Because now I, I sit here with you and I meditate every day. I get to spend more time with my mom. I get to be a stand-up comic that I never would have had time for, mm. you know, had this direction not occurred. Yeah. You're back now. You're, yeah. you're shooting films and TV and... Is it different for you having gone through this experience? Hollywood, Sam, our entertainment guy, likes to talk about Hollywood as high school with money. And like high school, people, you're in, you're not in, you're popular, you're not popular, and suddenly you can feel it like, a, like you're being hit by, by bricks. Yeah. You have been through this now. Um, do you look at Hollywood differently, this place that you've called home for a while? You know, I, I never thought I would be out here. I grew up as a stage actor in Chicago and I would watch movies and think, I, I you know, that's another world. So um, to me, it's, it's, it's all, you know, to be a working actor is a miracle. And, um, you know, I think when you, especially in, in our lane, if you look for logic and you look for things to make sense you know it, it doesn't it's not necessarily the case our job is to take control of our lives work really hard and just keep evolving being the best version of ourselves and then whatever happens happens mm. um, we can't get ahead of ourselves or you know um, as as I talk about in my in my stand up act there I lovingly take shots at The Rock saying, you know, he's the highest paid actor and never taken an acting class. You know, if you're looking for things to make sense, this isn't the lane, Yeah. you know? Um, so you just have to c take control of your destiny and do, and just like Shakespeare says, the readiness is all. When your number is called, when, you know, when they call you to do Sweetwater, are you ready? You know, can you, can you step up and, and play this character? And, and in my case, someone said to me, you know, uh, after doing all this stand-up, when you go back to acting, you're gonna be a better actor. And uh, I thought that's, how is that possible, Frank? Mm -hmm. I'm, you know. Um, <laughs> you're at the top of your game. Well, and, and the reality is that no matter what happens to you, there's, you can really learn and grow from all of it. Mm. And I, I do believe that um, if you really embrace it, then, you know, it, it can be a gift. And I know that sounds very, I don't even know how that sounds, but you have to, you have to see it that way and that's what it'll become. Mm.